It's a sunny morning, June 2016, in Zurich, Switzerland. I'm in this stunning office building overlooking the beautiful Zurich Lake. And I have a high-profile job working shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with the CEO of this prestigious financial institution. And I'm standing in the middle of one of those private exclusive offices, and I am sobbing. I'm crying my eyes out in front of my boss. And I have no idea what is going on. All I know is I cannot be there a minute longer. I grew up in Belgrade, Serbia with two siblings. And my parents, they were always so busy with my siblings who were in all sorts of trouble that they let me be independent. And so I learned to take care of myself. And of course, I turned into an independent, young, accomplished woman. I moved to Switzerland. I had a phenomenal career in finance, traveled around the world, and bought all the clothes that my heart desired. Life was good. And somewhere on that journey, subconsciously, I decided I can be happy alone. I don't really need anyone for my happiness. And then one day, doctor delivered the news. I had cancer. My reaction, <laughs> I said, doctor, that's fine, but can the surgery wait? I have some really fun travel plans coming up, and I would hate for this to interfere. You see, I wasn't going to let anything disturb my happiness bubble. I was taking care of myself. And yet here I was, two months after my surgery, crying my heart out in front of my boss. And I had no idea what to do. Therapy seemed like a logical step, so I started therapy. And I remember saying to my therapist, I have no idea what happened. I thought my life was fine. And she said to me, Marina, fine is good. But let's talk about a time when your life was really, really good. A time when you were really happy. I want you to tell me, what was different then? And I said, well, I was in a happy relationship. My health was great, and I was close to my family. No wonder I was there diagnosed with the burnout. I had been single for a long time because I wouldn't let anyone in. I was not taking care of my health to the point that I prioritized a fun trip over a serious surgery. And now I have pushed my family out of my life, thinking that I don't need them for my happiness. And so through the work with my therapist, I've established that these three, love, health, and family, are my three non-negotiables. Yet my life was anything but. And so I knew I needed to change drastically in order to be happy again. But change was so hard. It's as if my mind and my actions were two disconnected things. It's as if I was addicted to this material world and it was so much easier to reach out for shopping and travel and social media and all the instant gratification that was out there than to reach out for these three that seemed so far-fetched. And so I started reading like crazy to the point that I mastered the art of speed reading in the process because I was so hungry to find my answers. And then one day, soon after, I did. I, I read this book uh, called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself and by this brilliant neuroscientist called Dr. Joe Dispenza, to whom I will forever be thankful. And Dr. Joe, he talks about the common knowledge of our lives being a manifestation of what we carry within us, our thoughts and our emotions. But what I was less aware of is that out of 80,000 thoughts we each have every day, 95% of them are exactly the same as yesterday. So how on earth was I supposed to create a drastically different life when my thoughts were essentially exactly the same as yesterday? No wonder it was so hard. And Dr. Joe, he says it's possible, but in order to do that, we need to physically detach from our previous life. We need to detach from people, places, and experiences we associate with our previous life because they trigger the old set of thoughts. And so I took that seriously. <laughs> and I left Zurich, I moved to New York, I left my old job, I took on a new job, and I disconnected from my old friends and social circles for a while. And I created a brand new, fresh environment for myself in which I could cultivate a new set of thoughts one that would be aligned with my three non-negotiables. And I, I detached from the material world, which wasn't always easy, but I felt like the material world kept pulling me back in. But I used shopping diets and travel diets and social media diets and really anything that would help to teach my brain that I can be happy without these things. Because I knew my happiness truly is in these three. 
And then one day, about a year into this work, I, I woke up with a deep sense of calmness and happiness. And I realized I made it. I've detached from the material world and I've aligned my life with what I said was really important to me. I was happy. But then soon after it occurred to me, I had detached from this material world as if it was some evil thing, but truly it is neutral. And in fact, material world can be a beautiful thing if approached with the right mindset. And so I started experimenting and I thought, hmm, if the material world truly is optional to me, why not have fun with it? Why not turn it into a game or even a set of games? And this is how I started gamifying my life. And for those of you who are not familiar with the term, gamification is the art of turning activities into games in order to make them more enjoyable or exciting. And it often entails things like achieving levels or gathering points and stuff like that, but I'm talking about the gamification at a more fundamental level. And it is typically used to drive customer engagement, social media attraction, employee engagement. But how about using gamification to elevate our own lives? And so through the experience of gamifying my life, I came up with a three-step process that I would love to share with you today. Number one, get clear on your non-negotiables. For me, it was love, health, and family, but what is it for you? And this is really important because guess what? Once you're clear on what your non-negotiables are, everything else is up for play. Number two, embrace the concept of playful detachment. I am an executive coach, and in our coaching school, they taught us this brilliant concept of playful detachment, which essentially means you have a positive attitude towards something, you would welcome something into your life, but you're not attached to it. So when you get clear on what your non-negotiables are, I'm asking you to playfully detach from the rest, knowing that your happiness truly lies here. I'm not asking you to forget about it, just playfully detach. And so when I graduated from my coaching school, I really wanted to have an impact in the industry. And the number one association in the field, they were recruiting for the panel of judges for this most prestigious annual award. And so the old me would have thought, well, I just graduated. Who am I to contribute to such a high mission? But the new me thought, you know what? Let them decide. If I get accepted, great. If not, that's fine too. I was playfully detached. And so I applied and I got accepted. And it was a beautiful experience. Number three, play big. You see, a wonderful thing happens when you truly playfully detach. It's as if all the fear from failure falls away and all the anxiety falls away. And all of a sudden, playing big becomes easy. Playing big becomes the new norm. I call this the E-game. And so the point is my end goal. And, and typically, previously, what I would do is I would take multiple smaller steps in order to one day hopefully get to my end goal. Point A, B, C, and D. And so when I want to play big, what happens is I skip the A, skip the B, I skip the C and the D, and I go straight for the E. In other words, I skip all the small preparation steps that I would usually think I need, and I go straight for the big thing. I go straight for what would typically be so scary, except that now it's not because it's just a game. So as a coach, I really wanted to work with the top mentor in the field. And the number one executive coach in the world, Dr. Marshall Goldsmith, he runs this prestigious mentorship program to which tens of thousands of people apply annually. And only a very few iconic leaders get in. People like the ex-World Bank CEO, Jim Kim, and the likes. And so the old me would have thought, hmm, let me first get some more experience, A. Let me get another coaching degree, B. Let me see if I can find someone to personally refer me to this amazing mentor, C. Let me publish some more taught leadership in the field so that I'm seen as really worthy, D. But the new me thought, I have nothing to lose if I just go for the E. And so I applied and I got in and it's been the most rewarding experience ever since. So I think about that June 2016. I wish I could go back in time and tell my boss that my breakdown had nothing to do with him or his leadership style. 
I wish I could go back in time and hug that scared girl and tell her that it's going to be okay. Never in my life would I have thought that a year after I will have my own family in New York, that I will be happier than ever and even more successful than before because for the first time I was not attached to my success. And so no matter where you are in your life, I want you to hug yourselves and know that it's going to be okay. And if you're already doing all of this, great. But if you're not, give this a try. Try gamifying your life. Ask yourself, am I clear on my non-negotiables? Are my thoughts and actions truly aligned with it? Can I playfully detach from the rest? And when you do, shoot for the stars. What would it be like to have that one thing that star in the sky that you sometimes dare to dream about fall in your lap. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.